Oh, I see. The thing is, you wrote A and then you wrote B, and I'm like, who is B? I don't understand. <laughs> B is no. Bana. Oh, yes, I, I didn't understand as well. <laughs> Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Brownian Notion. I am Ananya. And I'm Gogol. Today, we have a very exciting episode for you. Joining us is my very dear friend, Anna Alishandra Oliveira da Costa. It's a mouthful, right? Do you get people who are confused about your name, Anna? Oh my God, like all the time. It's like, <laughs> it started when I moved to Germany. Yeah. But so currently I'm staying for some months in the US and it just got way worse. So they just cannot understand. They ask me, so what's your last name? And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, let me start. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get ready for this. So what is your middle name? Is Alejandra Oliveira both middle name? <laughs> that is no it? middle name. Okay. That's, that's, then is where I go next because then they'll ask me like, so what's your first name? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I heard you had a bit of an accident last week. So Yeah, so yes, on Monday, actually, coming from work, I was feeling so good. You know, one of these days when you are like, everything is going so yeah. well. So I was coming from work, it was late, it was dark, I was biking, but yeah, and <laughs> I just fell by myself. There oh was my. some something on the road, I lost control on my bicycle and I just fell on the ground. That sounds really horrible. How did you get to the hospital? Oh yeah, so <laughs> that's the thing about here in the US, I'm, I'm actually so in Michigan, people are super nice here. It's like extremely mm -hmm. nice. So I fell on my bicycle. There was this car just behind me and they, oh. they just stopped. And there was these girls, some students from the, the university where I'm staying. Uh, and they just helped me immediately. So they looked at me. So I could not look at myself. So I didn't know how bad my face looked. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> there was a bit of blood. <laughs> So they were like looking at me like, oh, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm okay. What's what's the problem, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and of course, you know, US and the health care system, we hear all of these horror stories about it. So I was a bit worried to go to the hospital, of course. Yeah. So, and they were actually more worried than me. What didn't help? <laughs> oh, the, the people in the car? Yes, yes. Oh. So they were looking at me and they were like, yeah, I'm not sure if you need to go. And and then they were like, yeah, I think your shin will need some stitches, you know. So. Shin or chin? <laughs> I actually don't know. You have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> shin is on your leg. Chin is on your face. <laughs> chin, chin, chin. Chin, okay. <laughs> and, you, and you got stitches, right? Yes, I got stitches. Yeah. Now you'll just have like a badass car. I will like, have. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> What's with the biking in the US? I hear that you cannot really bike in the US, right? Or at least most people don't, right? How did you manage to get hold of a bicycle and like, what's the story there? Um, there is all of these preconceptions, right? That we get. Yeah. 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 So they're not real true most of the time. Oh, really? <laughs> The thing is that I'm in a city, so I'm in East Lansing. Um, there is a, so the Michigan State University, that's where I'm doing my research right now. Mm -hmm. um, and in this part of the city closest to university, most of the city actually, is quite friendly to bike. So the city is mostly flat. They okay. do have a lot of like um, bike lanes on the road so they have like a dedicated area for bikes to to ride hmm. with bicycle it's so easy to move around you know because of the space there is a lot of space <laughs> yeah. you know when you get used to european cities where you are like you know on top of cars or you know or on top of the pedestrians if they put you in the sidewalk yeah here there is just space and it's very nice if you don't have a bicycle, then everything is really far. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a bicycle or if you don't have a car? Wait, I'm confused. Mode of transportation. Yes. Ah, yes okay. Yes. Okay. So with yeah. bike is is easy, right? And with car, of course, it's easy. 
uh, but walking everywhere is rather difficult. Yeah, plus it's like it's gonna get worse uh, weather-wise, so it gets harder on a bike too. That's why I didn't buy a bike. I wanted to buy a bike. I'm also in the Midwest right now. Ah, cool. And yeah, I wanted to buy a bike, but I knew that I could not bike on slippery roads. And Nebraska is like winter for seven months or something. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Quick question. I'm just curious, like, how do people react to you when you tell them, yeah, you don't have a car? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that was a bit of a shock for me here because even strangers, right? I just met somebody on the street because that happens. People will talk to you on the street out of nowhere. They will be like offering me to give me a ride for the supermarkets, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, dude, I just met you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like they are super worried about you. Like uh, how can you yeah. live? You know, how can you do stuff? Without a car. Yeah. Yeah. When I moved to Nebraska also, I used to have a car before. Oh. But in Nebraska, when I moved and I told people that I don't have a car and I don't intend on buying one, everyone looked at me like I just told them I regularly murder people or something. <laughs> so they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the look. So, so Anna, how did you uh, get to the hospital? You already told us a little bit that somebody gave you a ride. And then what happened after that? Yeah. So these girls that helped me, they... Actually, they were asking me if I want to call 911. And I was, is that a good idea? And they were looking at me like, no. <laughs> and then I was looking at them. I was saying, okay, I'm just here for a couple of months. I really don't know the system. So I don't know. I, I need some guidance here. And they were like, okay, so we'll give you a ride to the emergency room. That's the best way. And on the way to the emergency room, they were like, do you have some way to get back home? Do you have somebody to give you a ride back? You know, because cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. <laughs> and and then because of that, actually, I, so I was in the emergency room and I was like, okay, this is going to take some time. I don't have a way to get back home. You know, that I'm here just for, you know, two months. Um, and... I realize I don't have my family here. I don't have my closest friends here. I don't know what to mm. do. So luckily, I actually got pretty close to the people I'm working with. I, I will even say we are friends now, right? So, yeah. and for me, this realization that, you know, I was including them as friends after being here for only two months Whoa, it was like a bit of a, my mind exploded because usually I take years to make friends. <laughs> so then I just texted them, yeah. Yeah, you have just been there two months, right? Yeah, it's yeah. really cool that you develop these friendships that you can bank upon already. Exactly, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so as you said, it used to take you like a lot of time to make friends or to consider somebody as a friend. So what do you think has changed in the last few months? Is it just the people? Is it just that there were the right people in the right situation, the right circumstance? Or is it because it's really difficult to be in that situation and not be supported by someone? Or do you think it's like a mixture of all of these things? Yeah, there is, there is a lot in the mix. Of course, one part is myself, right? So, yeah. uh, so I left Portugal six or seven years ago. So that mm -hmm. means I left my comfort zone. And in my comfort zone, I knew what to make friends, right? right? It's my culture. I grew up there. So, and when I left my comfort zone, I realized, oh, damn, it's really hard to make friends. <laughs> right, Especially yeah. when you go to a different, like, culture you know, so yeah. I, I went from a more like Mediterranean culture, communication based, <laughs> you know, yeah. to a more Germanic one. So it was a big, yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and then there is other things because so these friends I have now, they are actually from Calcutta. Mm -hmm. You know, I had already uh, <laughs> some introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was here with the right people at the right time. Yeah, and, and, and the cultures. Actually, I think the cultural background of people is really important. Yeah. Maybe yes. actually you can tell us a bit about that. <laughs> interacting with you, interacting with Alex, Alessandra. Yeah, there is another Alessandra. <laughs> <laughs> and also some of our Spanish 
friends and colleagues i have seen that yeah our cultures are much more similar even compared to like as you said germanic cultures i think even though everything is considered europe i think portuguese and spanish and mediterranean cultures are very different from say nordic or germanic cultures so yeah uh, as you said i think we have discussed this uh, on length at times that it's it's super difficult to make friends uh, i think i think the and what i came to realize because i'm i'm juggling between these two types of cultures let's say yeah, uh, yeah. they are more protective like with you and with the friends i get here by default yeah. they accept you by default you are their best friends you know yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's say no, but yeah. it is. Like, it, it feels a bit like this, you know. Like if yeah. there is nothing really wrong with you in this immediate first impression, right? Uh, they just accept you, you know, and they then they see what happens. Yeah, that's been my experience in USA also, with people who are immigrants from certain countries. It's like you're accepted immediately, and you can just come over for lunch or dinner. or you can just invite people no questions asked yeah do you know the story how i became friends with anna oh. because i think initially oh, yeah. we were not very good friends so yeah it's a funny story actually we studied in the same masters she was one year before me i think and in vienna the people from the masters it's a very tightly knit group so everybody knows everyone but yeah i think it took us a while to become friends so initially i think i didn't quite understand anna because it can take a bit of time to understand her but once you understand you just realize that she is one of the best friends you could have it's just that the way she shows affection and care and love and all these things it's very different from other people it was the summer of 2018 this was in in anna's old apartment and everybody like all of my close friends then they were gone from vienna they were all home or somewhere so we did hang out like before this time but not like just the two of us not alone it was always with other people so anna invited me to her apartment they were having a party i remember like i was a bit apprehensive because of course i didn't know her so well but then before leaving anna gave me a hug and the thing is you have to know about anna that she doesn't like hugging people she hates yeah. hugging people yeah. but she <laughs> hugged me and i was like oh my god i was so happy that day because anna hugged me but yeah and then slowly we became friends and we kind of got to the wavelength where showing affection or showing care it's just i think at some point we just had the wavelength that matched you know do you have a different story anna or do you also remember it the same way Yeah no I I remember this so <laughs> yeah I don't like much that people like touch me in general because so in Portugal we have a very somehow for me intrusive way of touching you know okay. people will kiss you all the time and oh, will, like yeah. hug you all the time yeah. and, and I'm a bit sensitive so I don't know so my approach was like okay so I, I don't want to hug you you know <laughs> Yeah And then of course when we start hanging out it was just we were in different phases so I actually had just finished my masters when we start hanging out more I don't know if you remember so you were yeah. going to the yeah. library and studying for your masters but I had just finished it so Yeah we were just in kind of different phases so we didn't cross so much although we had the same friends Yeah but the thing with me is that I care a lot about people and that's why I like to keep some distance otherwise yeah. it's just a bit too much it's just a bit yes. overwhelming Yeah Yeah and so my way to show to Deba that I cared about him and actually I hugged him back then because I knew he was a bit sad for being alone in Vienna you know and then yeah. I was leaving for 3 weeks and then I was like and i wanted to show to him that i see him i know he's sad but you know i'll be back <laughs> oh <Yeah. laughs> so <laughs> but yeah <laughs> uh. but and that's the thing so i had to leave my comfort zone when i left portugal yeah and that means that i needed to learn how to be more expressive in my emotions because mm-hmm. in portugal people will be expressive for me they are so huggy and loving <laughs> and everything that I could just be more passive and being in Vienna and being with people like Deba and all the other friends I start to realize okay I got to be a bit more active showing my affection otherwise people are not in my head 
Yeah. Also, maybe you got more comfortable. Maybe because you knew us for quite some time, you also maybe developed that, you know, that it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable in that way, you know? I don't know. I'm just like yeah, asking you. Yeah, and that's, you. you know, I will not be hugging you. And that for me is the worst. Like, I'll be hugging you and then I'll never see you again. You know? <laughs> for me, that's like the worst, yes. you know? I yes. open to somebody and, and this can happen. This can actually yeah. happen in Vienna. You yeah. open to somebody and then they just disappear from your life. They ghost you, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I could yeah. be confident you'll not ghost me. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys think that it gets harder as we get older to make friends? Yes. Definitely for me, yeah. But why why do you think that happens? It's exactly what Anna said. You open up to somebody and then that person leaves. When that happens to you over and over and over and over again, it's the same thing with relationships in a certain sense. You just get like, okay, I'm not going to open up to anybody now. You just get to that state and then you're like, yeah, I'm just happy with the few number of friends that I have. I'm just glad that, that I have Anna in my life, for example. It's just too much work and it's very little like. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Too much investment and very little payoff. Yeah, very basically. little payoff, exactly. So uh, have you guys lost friends as life has progressed? Because I know I oh, have. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that's the thing, right? I think, as you said, so you lost lost in the sense that you break up with friends or something, or they ghost you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so this happens, and this really crushes your heart when it's yeah. a very close friend of yours. Yeah. And I would say, I think that I suffered more with friends leaving than with relationships ending. Maybe I, I feel that I'm weird because all the mainstream media is telling me that I'm weird, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We are all just, weird. Just <laughs> because I think with relationships, we probably think that if a breakup happens, that's kind of accepted. But with friendships, we feel like it is supposed to be forever. That's how I felt. I agree with you. But I also feel that I don't think there is anybody in the mainstream right now. I think mainstream is just an entity which is on its own. If you really go around, I feel there are more people like us who are all struggling. I feel like mainstream has little to no focus on friendships at all. It's all about romantic relationships. Yeah. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Or family yeah. or something. So I think our culture evolved a lot into this nuclear notion of like family or the partnership and yeah. i personally i'm more of a community person yeah. although i'm a bit of an introvert yeah. i do enjoy to have community N not only my partner with yeah. me but like my friends yeah. <laughs> no i agree with you and that's what i sorely miss being here there is unless you have a big group of people from your own country or people who have accepted you kind of yeah there is no real community. Do you genuinely think that most people are happy with this? Because I don't think so. I just... Happy with? With this, this whole notion of nuclear families, of just being with your partner. And as Anna was also saying, it's like the community versus you and your partner. Do you think this whole move towards a society where you are just trying to make it more and more nuclear where you're only focusing on your partner, your children, your immediate family, and that's it. Do you think that's a very healthy thing? Do you think people are happy with this? No, I don't think so. Like, I know people who are definitely lying to themselves. They recently got married and, you know, after a few months, it's like, okay, now what do we do? But, I mean, I understand because... You're getting married to this person and you kind of end up looking yeah. for every answer in this one person. Yeah, and there is no community. There is no other person that, you know, you just go on a coffee date with or you just go watch movies with. Maybe your partner is not feeling like it. It becomes very, I don't have a good word for it, but I think you just start looking for all the answers in this one person and the pressure just builds up. Yeah. I feel like that's that cannot be a good thing in the long run. And I guess when you just get bored or something, then you just have a baby and try to focus all the answers <laughs> on the baby. On the baby yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because the reason I'm asking is that I don't know about you, but I feel Indian culture is also moving in that direction. Slowly but steadily, we are moving to a very, very, very nuclear state of our family, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if this is such a healthy thing. 
yeah, so I, I completely agree with everything you just said before. So I do have this idea that a lot of romantic pairings, like uh, marriage or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, actually end because of this. Because I see this myself in my relationship yeah. in the sense that I know that my partner is not the answer to all my needs because that's ridiculous. I'm not the answer to all his needs, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I already realized this and I know that I got to have different friends, you know, people I do other things that is maybe not interested to do it, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. I think that's how we are kind of taught that this is what is expected of you. This is what the ideal future looks like that you buy a house that you I don't know it's just like and then you just start hanging out with other people who also wants to buy a house I just feel yeah. it just yes. drains you completely if you have yeah. people who are just trying to emulate each other and in turn trying to emulate this notion of happiness that is not theirs it's just somebody telling them or it's it's like a passive imbibed wish of of people to do I don't know exactly but yeah that's a good point because I feel like even though I feel like if India is moving towards that culture, mm -hmm. um, if you're right, I feel like it'll be slower, I hope, than we think. There's just so many people. It's very difficult to ignore people in India, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps that we have so many festivals, yes, right? Yeah. Like we just had yes, a major festival yeah. and that is what I feel sorely missing here. Yes. Like for Christmas or Thanksgiving, people just go home. Yeah. Yeah. So there is no festivity really exactly. outside. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Oh, that's a, actually a very good point. I was thinking, so Deba, do you know in Vienna any kind of festivity for friends? You know, like not Christmas, not Easter, but mm. some kind of holiday where friends are supposed to. No, there isn't actually. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a very good point. There isn't. I think the only thing that I can think of is basically uh, when during summer we go to the Donau. That's it. But it's not really a festival. It's just a thing that yeah. we do, you know. That we religiously, we somehow try to go to the Donau every summer. And then we are just hanging out with friends. But you are right. There is no festival as such that you spend with friends. And yeah. And this okay, is... Okay, because we, we would have these actually in Portugal. Really? Uh, so our religious festivities yeah. um, are like done city center. And basically, you just go with your friends and you have these, I don't know, you have amusement park. You are just hanging out with friends. And this happens since you are like 14 or something. Wow. You know, every village will have such a party. And this is after Christmas or no? No, no. So in Portugal, this usually happens in summer. So June <sighs> and July. We don't have all the gods you get in your religion. Yeah. But we get the saints. Okay. So in each village has its own saint. And then they have a day where they celebrate their saints. Saints. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then for like three days, there is like a big party and you wow. know, there is like live music and everybody's outside. And this is not a family thing. festivity. Ah, nice. But I don't remember such a thing in Vienna. It, I don't think <laughs> there is one. But is this similar to Carnival or, or is it different? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay, yes. yeah. I know that in Austria, there's a time where they all wear this lederhosen and dindles and they go and party. But I'm not sure if this is like a specifically friend thing or what is the occasion. I'm not very sure about. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Just, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I really don't know what they do. I just yeah. see them dressed. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe yeah. we should ask. <laughs> we should ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe they are having tons of fun. We yeah, just we just know. don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tells us. The whole point of the episode. <laughs> But I think what Anna described, I have seen something similar in Goa, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure when I saw it because there is some Portugal. Goa was a Portuguese colony. It was, yes. right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. I feel like what she described, I have seen that, but I saw that around summer. So I don't know if that's the same thing. Yeah, it's around summer. Yeah. Yes. It's around summer? Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. it's around summer. So maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. a really nice way to hang out. We should move to Portugal. 
<laughs> if you don't like money, yes. Yes, this is what I was saying. So I should move to Portugal and still keep the job in Vienna. Because I can... Okay. <laughs> so this has been lovely uh, chatting with Anna, but unfortunately we are out of time. This takes us to our next segment where we ask our guests if they have any recommendations for us, something they did over the weekend, a book they read, a movie they watched. Do you have something for us, Anna? This week, I start watching this series. It's called Kominsky Methods. It's in Netflix. Ooh, mm-hmm. I like yeah. it. I don't know. I just kind of saw the thumbnail, you know, when you're like just scrolling through Netflix. Right. It's a sitcom, okay. but a bit darker okay. and slow paced. And the main characters are basically two guys that are maybe 60 or 70 years old, Mm -hmm. something like this. And they are really good friends. Okay. One is a coach for actors. And another one is like an agent, or it used to be because now they are almost retired from what I saw so far, because I'm still watching the series. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I really like is the dialogues they have, the main actors. Okay. Because they are like this old aged man how they relate to the world, how it is right now, and how they relate to the fact that their bodies are kind of failing them. Mm. And all these discussions about life and stuff between two grumpy men. I don't know. It's so lovely when they... (laughs) Yeah, it sounds Uh, (laughs) quite interesting. So there is no other plot point. It's just they are talking about their own experiences. There is plot, so there is things happening, right? So one of the guys, I think is Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas. Yes. Yeah. Um, he's like, he's coaching actors. So he actually has like a school. Oh. And I think this is really interesting, especially for Deba, because he's talking about what it is to act, you know? So he wow. actually talks about acting as well. And you get to see some of his students doing some like small acting scenes, you know? The other guy is played by Alan Arkin. And actually the story starts when his wife dies. And his wow. wife was very good friends with the other man as well. I see. Uh, and then it just goes around what is happening in their life. There is comedy in it. But there is at the same time some discussion about like life. But I, 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 I just recommend you to watch it's a bit slow paced and it's a bit dark. So maybe you need to be in the right state of mind. No, it uh, <laughs> it sounds right up my alley. I would definitely check it out. Yeah, it's delightful. Yeah. I forgot that I watched oh, it. Oh, you watched it, it too? Amazing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm waiting for the third season. I recommended it to my dad. He also really enjoyed it. So that's a very nice recommendation. I have to agree. Nice. And the thing is this friendship they have. They are friends for maybe like 50 years. Yeah. So they know each other so well. You know, they have all these comebacks. They are always kind of roasting each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good. But at the same time, they, they, they are helping each other. So it's, yeah. I don't know, friendship goals. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very nice recommendation for the episode, I think. It fits perfectly. Yeah, I agree. So thank you so much. For taking time out, especially when you're not doing so well. Thank you so much for taking the time out. It was an absolute delight to talk to you. And uh, hope you recover very, very fast. And see you soon in Vienna. (laughs) I hope the same. Thank you. (laughs) So guys, that's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you had as much as fun as we did. You'll find our social media handles in the show notes. Please follow us. Send us a DM. We love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions for future topics or something you would like us to change, we would love to know your thoughts. See you next week. Ciao. Bye. No, no, no. Mm -mm. That's my literal nightmare.